Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate you being here today. Uh, my name is David Brackenrich. I am the state manager for GSA. I am out of the Casper office and, uh, and responsible for the federal buildings here in Wyoming. So we appreciate you. Oh, appreciate you being here today, for sure. Weather aside, of course. So, uh, to begin today's ceremony, I'd like to ask that everyone please stand and we'll uh, do the national anthem, please. Okay, before we get started, we're going to take a few minutes here. Has everyone got a program yet? If they have all been handed out from yeah. Did everybody have one? Everybody? We're all good? Okay, very good. All right. Um, in addition to the flow of the events, you'll also find a short bio on Louisa Swain on the back. There's a full transcript of the law designating the official changing of the name of the building today. Our speakers for this event will cover how we got to this point and some history of Louisa Swing. However, before I do invite our speakers up, I would like to give just a little bit of background on the building itself. So you'll excuse me, I'm going to <clears throat> just going to read through this. The federal building in Cheyenne was a product of the National Building Act construction program enacted by Congress in 1928, which later helped to alleviate unemployment caused by the Depression. The massive building program authorized the construction of federal buildings throughout the nation. This federal building that you see here before us was designed in the neoclassical style. Thank you very much. This building was designed by William Du Bois, a regional prominent architect. He was educated at the Chicago School of Architecture. And du Bois moved to Cheyenne in 1901 and established a very successful firm here in the city. Du Bois blended his mastery of the neoclassical architectural style with elements of the Beaux Arts, Romanesque Revival, and Art Deco styles in his many designs. He also designed other prominent buildings throughout Wyoming, including the east and west wings of our state capitol, the Carnegie Library that used to be in Cheyenne, the historic Plains Hotel, and the Heinz Building, to name a few. While many of these buildings still exist, it is significant that this is the only federal building that he designed. The original three-story portion of this building was completed in 1933. So one-story addition was added in 1937. Other improvements over the years include a stair tower to the east end of the building built in 1947, as well as accessible ramp on the back side of the building. The building entrance lobby retains much of the original finishes, including the marble and terrazzo flooring, marble wainscot, and some plaster wall surfaces and ceiling trim. The upper floors were remodeled in 1999 for continued office use by building tenants. In October of 2000, the Cheyenne Federal Building was listed on the National Register of Historic Places. So after the ceremony, if you get a chance to walk into the building, you can feel free to do so. So now at this time, I would like to introduce our first speaker for today. Senator Cynthia Lummis sponsored the bill to rename this federal building. And it's her strong efforts that got us to today's ceremony and the naming of this building. So if you please welcome Senator Lawrence. Oh, thank you so much.
this is a happy day for me. You know, on September 6th of 1870, Louisa Swain became the first woman in the world uh, to cast a ballot in an election uh, because Wyoming was the first government in the world to grant women continuously the right to vote. That happened 50 years before the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution granted all women in this country the right to vote. Wyoming had so many firsts. Uh, the first woman voter, first woman grand juror, first woman bailiff, first women to serve as delegates to the Republican and Democratic National Conventions, first woman to hold statewide office, and first woman governor. It is because of Louisa Swain's vote that those efforts and those accomplishments were kicked off. And so I think it's fitting that this building uh, be dedicated to honor Wyoming and its first woman voter, Louisa Swain. You have a little history of Louisa Swain uh, in your brochure. Uh, and she was an orphan. She uh, was a member of uh, the Friends Church, the Quakers, and uh, she came out here with her husband, uh, having uh, married him after being raised as an orphan. Uh, her father went out to sea, uh, never to return. Uh, and so when she and her husband came out here and settled in Laramie, uh, the, time, the timing was perfect for her to become the first woman voter. And we understand that she was specifically chosen in Laramie because she was an upstanding woman. And the other women in Laramie knew that this was a historic event. And they wanted someone from their community who was a gentle woman of stature and good graces. And so she was chosen. And she uh, was carrying her pail uh, to uh, head for uh, the store on her way and cast her ballot en route uh, to do her other uh, daily duties. So while it was perhaps a humble event at the time, it was a historic event that we honor today. I am grateful to all of you who have played a role in honoring that history. Um, I want to point out a couple of people. One is Adam Stewart. Adam, would you stand? Adam Stewart is uh, a member of our staff in Washington, D.C. Adam is the person who's really most responsible for getting this bill passed. Uh, he bird dogged it through uh, the U.S. Senate and the U.S. House. Uh, we, uh, I also want to thank our co-sponsors. Of course, uh, my dear, respected colleague, John Barrasso, uh, joined me in sponsoring this bill, as did the Maryland Senators, uh, Chris Van Hollen and Ben Cardin. Uh, Louisa Swain is buried in uh, the Baltimore area, uh, in a uh, Quaker cemetery, the Friends Cemetery. Uh, and so we thought it appropriate to ask our colleagues from Maryland uh, to co-sponsor our bill. So that's why you have Wyoming and Maryland's delegations joining uh, in this effort. Adam's the one who identified that this would be an appropriate building because it was had been previously unnamed. Uh, and because of this historic uh, event uh, and Wyoming's role in this historic event, uh, we wanted uh, everyone who passes by this building, uh, as well as uh, our co-sponsors in Washington to realize the significance of this history. Uh, I want to acknowledge the presence of the mayor of Cheyenne. Uh, thank you, Pat Collins, for coming today. Uh, I want to acknowledge the board of the uh, foundation in Laramie that has uh, nurtured uh, the history house that was uh, built in Laramie uh, to uh, honor uh, this historic 
occasion. Uh, it has been uh, something that Punch Williamson, who's here today and I have been involved in since day one, uh, with our dear friend uh, Weldon Tuck. Uh, Weldon uh, is not here today. He is currently uh, in Virginia with his family. But Weldon Tuck brought to our attention uh, this historic event and that we needed to honor it. And that was in, oh, that was more than 20 years ago, Punch. And uh, it took a Virginian uh, who's used to uh, acknowledging the history of our country to remind us uh, that we have important history in this state that we need to celebrate, honor, and recognize. Uh, so I want to acknowledge Melvin's particular role in that today. And most importantly, I want to thank uh, our, our dear governor uh, for attending today. Uh, governor Mark Gordon uh, has uh, been nothing but supportive of all of these efforts. And uh, I get to speak on his behalf today. How often does that happen? <laughs> He has uh, a bit of laryngitis today, and I just want you to know, Governor, that um, your office uh, in the historic Wyoming State Capitol uh, is, uh, is truly wonderful. And the reason our State Capitol building is on the National Trust for Historic Preservation list is because of the event that took place there, and that was the Wyoming Territorial Legislature uh, passing legislation uh, to acknowledge women's roles in, in this territory and later this state uh, as voters uh, with full uh, legal rights with men. So uh, to those of you here today who have been so important to this effort, uh, if I have neglected to mention you, my apologies. But I want to tell you I'm very proud of this. I want to thank GSA for your efforts. Uh, I want to acknowledge uh, that John Barrasso uh, has staff here today. Thank you uh, for joining us uh, with my dear, dear friend and colleague, uh, in the Senate. and uh, Kathy Conway, who is here representing the Wyoming State Legislature. Uh, on a day that we are uh, so proud to acknowledge Louisa Swain, uh, the first woman voter in the world from Wyoming, Laramie, and uh, our beloved equality state. Thank you. Representative from Senator Barrasso's office, please. I think he was kind enough to prepare a uh, statement for us. Good afternoon. Thank you. Um, it's a pleasure to be here to represent Senator Barrasso on this special occasion. Um, I do have a brief letter of congratulations that I'll share. Dear friends, it is a wonderful day to celebrate the naming of the Louisa Swain Federal Office Building. Louisa Swain was the first woman in the United States to cast a vote in a general election. On September 6, 1890, she changed American history and paved the way for women not only in Wyoming, but all over the nation. In 2021, Wyoming's first female U.S. Senator, Cynthia Lummis, introduced S-2126, legislation naming this building after Louisa Swain. It was an honor to co-sponsor the bill. It is a wonderful way to recognize the important role women in Wyoming played in women's suffrage and equality. The Equality State is proud to be home to strong female, strong female leaders who continue to shape our state and country. Their courage, leadership, and dedication will be remembered for generations to come. Bobby and I send our best wishes and congratulations for this historic event. We are truly proud to call Wyoming home. With warm regards, Senator John Barrasso. Okay, thank you. Our next speaker is Mary Mountain. Uh, she is the executive director of the Louisa Swain Foundation, which is based in Laramie. 
And we are very appreciative of the effort the Foundation makes to keep the significance of Louisa Swain alive so that generations to come know her significance and impact in history. Amen. It is my honor to follow Cynthia Lummis. Uh, Senator Lummis has been with us from the very beginning in Laramie, standing alongside Weldon, Tuck, and Punch Williamson to celebrate this humble woman and the women who stepped up because Wyoming territory, the men of Wyoming decided to give this remarkable suffrage act these remarkable powers to women in those days to keep their land, to keep their money, to earn money on equal terms with men, to be able to vote, hold public office. Um, we are so excited in Laramie that we have a place to tell that history. Literally a stone's throw. You can stand at the history house across from where those women sat on that first jury, where Louisa walked with her yeast pail on her way to the store uh, and cast her vote on that way. Um, you can land a rock near where she did that. How exciting is that? And how exciting that Weldon and Punch thought they would take an empty lot that was right across from there and do something productive to tell that story. Like Senator Lama said, it took a Virginian to remind us that this is pretty remarkable that we do this in Wyoming. Uh, you can't go to any other state that did this, that not only gave women these rights 50 years before, but they held on to them as they fought to become a state. That's another part of our teaching at the History House over there. We talk about how Wyoming held firm because when they went to Washington, D.C. and were applying to become a state, um, they said, yeah, but you can, but you, uh, you've got the numbers now, but you're going to have to rescind that act. No one else is giving women those rights. And Wyoming, the, the legend is that Wyoming, the legislature, legislators said, will remain out of the union 100 years before we come without the women. Part of it was population. They had to have the women for their population. So if that was indeed a quote, um, which we're still finding out where, who said that, it's a pretty remarkable thing that we hung tight, that our men said we need the women. And they did. They needed to settle the West with those women. And, um, and so what a smart move. Give women their rights, give them exactly what they're due, just like the men. Uh, so we love to tell that story. Um, I was honored to follow Senator Lummis, but, but then I had to change my whole little dinner here because she told all the good facts. So, so, so thank you very much. <laughs> no, it's great. She's been with us a very long time, and, and she's followed this with a passion that I, I want to carry on. It's, her passion and Weldon's, uh, what he began there, I want to continue that. And we have such a great board and so many great docents who are with us today who tell that history. Our, um, our Wyoming Women's History House is open um, almost all year long now. From March 1st, we open those gates all the time. So come over and visit and learn that history. Be reinvigorated by that history. Um, we are on YouTube. I want you to know this because you can learn our history. Uh, you can teach it um, just by pulling up the reenactments that happen at our special events. We do events that are called Sip and Savor History, toss a little wine around and a few uh, hors d'oeuvres, and learn a little bit about the women. We have reenactments at those events that's sponsored by the Wyoming Women's um, Council as well. And um, we just launched Louisa today. So if you go to YouTube to look up Wyoming Women's History, house that'll pull her up um, it will also pull up um, Martha Boys who was our first bailiff and and Nellie Taylor who was our first woman governor all the things that happen as we continue to have events continue to have reenactments we uh, continue to tell that history in ways that is through social media and through you coming and just feeling that you're at the place where that history happened remarkable thank you it's my honor to be here Thank you, Mary. Uh, our final speaker today is Leanne Bonetta. Leanne is our Senior Regional General Counsel for GSA in Region 8. 
uh, out of Denver. She was also previously been our acting regional administration for Region A. So um, for GSA, please lean over. Good afternoon, everyone. It is a beautiful day. It might be a little windy, but uh, but it is a, it is a lot prettier here than it is down in Denver right now. Let me tell you. Uh, I am privileged to speak on behalf of the U.S. General Services Administration, of the custodian of this beautiful federal building, and soon to be unveiled, the Louisa Swain Federal Office Building. A sincere thank you to Senator Lummis, to Mary Mountain, yes. um, to Governor Gordon, thank you for being here, and to the Mayor of Cheyenne, thank you for being here, Mayor Collins. Um, I would be remiss to not recognize the members of the Cheyenne League of Women Voters um, who are in attendance today, some dressed as suffragettes. Um, thank you to each of you for coming here to honor the legacy of Louisa Swain. I, I too had comments about Louisa Swain, but you have heard them all now <laughs> from these two lovely ladies um, on stage. Um, so I will just jump into the remainder of my comments. Today's ceremony is a reflection of not only GSA's commitment to support the effective operation of the federal government through our federal buildings, but to the history of Mrs. Swain and her extraordinary vote. GSA manages the nation's largest and most diverse real estate portfolio, which provides more than one million federal employees nationwide a place to work. This building in particular is special for a number of reasons. As noted, the building is among a small inventory of federal buildings that are listed on the National Register of Historic Places meaning that the building is worthy of preservation as a historical and cultural resource of our nation. Further, naming a federal building, as we have seen done today, is done via an act of Congress. In our Rocky Mountain region's portfolio, which includes Colorado, Utah, North and South Dakota, Montana, and Wyoming, this is the first that is dedicated to a woman. GSA is proud to have this building named after Louisa Swain, reflecting the values of our nation and recognizing the importance of her contribution to the women's suffrage movement. As this building will now be known as the Louisa Swain Federal Office Building, it will serve as a reminder of the strong leadership of women throughout our country's history, and especially in Wyoming, and an encouragement that everyone can make an impact or be a catalyst for change, using the power and strength of our diversity and talents to support this great nation. In closing, I would like to thank Martha Wilson, from Senator Lummis' office, David Brackenridge and Denise Bird from the Wyoming field office of GSA, and Brenda Armijo and Rich Stevens from the GSA regional headquarters for their hard work to make this event such a success. Thank you for attending. I think I'm just honored to be the state manager of the first uh, building named after Lee. That's, that is fantastic, isn't it? Yes. Okay, that concludes today's ceremony. I, I would like to thank everybody and the speakers for being here today. We have.